Michio, when I was younger, the far future was my next paycheck. Uh, today, sometimes the far future seems like the next election. But let's think really about the far future, not just when the sun burns out in five billion years or so, but push it as far as we can. What can we say today about what the far future of our whole universe really will be? Well, philosophers and poets have asked the question, will the world end in fire or ice? We can now give an answer. The universe, we think, will die in ice. Now, if you take a look at our universe, uh, you mentioned that our sun will probably die in ice. Our Earth will probably die in fire, probably be eaten up by the sun as it dies. Our Milky Way galaxy will probably die in fire as it collides with Andromeda, a nearby galaxy, and gets eaten alive by our closest galactic neighbor. But our universe seems to be in a runaway mode. It's careening out of control. Every textbook says that our universe is a bubble of some sort that's expanding but slowing down. Every textbook says something like that. That's wrong. The latest evidence shows that the universe is not slowing down, but it's speeding up out of control and that we will probably all die in ice trillions upon trillions of years from now. And what happens to the particles in our universe? Everything is, is as the universe acceleration speeds up and gets faster and faster, all the particles just get more and more dispersed from each other. That's right, and the night sky will be unrecognizable in the future. Uh, the galaxies will be so far away that light cannot even reach us anymore. And it's gonna be quite dark at night as the suns blink out in outer space and the distant galaxies are so far so away. So future human uh, uh, generations, assuming we, we all survive in some way, which is not 100% not sure, of course, if you look at the newspaper every day, but assuming we do, uh, galaxies will wink out over time and, and uh, just our local group would, would be attracted to one another. And then eventually, if you extend the time even further, even the slowest burning stars begin to uh, die and expand or explode and then, and then grow cold themselves. That's right. The universe seems to evolve in five basic stages. Uh, the first stage was the fiery Big Bang and the creation of the right. early stars. We're in the second stage, a very early stage, the stage of star formation. But on a large scale of things, life and star formation is just the very first two stages. Yeah. Then we go into a much larger stage where the stars begin to die, as you mentioned. White dwarf, red dwarf stars begin to dominate the universe. Then black holes. All of a sudden, all the stars are gone in the future. They're nothing but dead neutron stars. We have black holes that are dying embers of these gigantic objects that once flared up in the universe. Even beyond that, atoms themselves begin to disintegrate. The proton, which is the bedrock of our existence, everything we see and touch is made out of protons, they begin to disintegrate. And in the far future, everything becomes a gas a gas of electrons, a gas of neutrinos, and temperatures are so low that no machine can possibly create any motion in this distant future. In other words, the laws of physics are a death warrant <laughs> to all intelligent life. So what does that, what does that mean? I mean, it, how, how do we reflect upon that? Everything seems so normal. We look around, we see ourselves, we see our families, but, but the reality is, the real reality, undergirding everything we do is over this granted long period of time, but uh, in one sense, uh, it's not so long. I mean, we could write it with just a few numbers. You need, you need exponential numbers, but you know, 10 to the 110, 120 years, black holes evaporate, protons decay, and so you might have, you know, an electron every you know, quadrillion cubic light years or something, and that's it. And it just, it keeps expanding from there. I mean, it, what, what is that? I mean, that, ju that just seems so incredible. It seems like there's gotta be something else. Well, the job of us physicists is to calculate the engine driving this runaway expansion of the universe. It seems to be something called the cosmological constant, mm -hmm. the dark energy, the energy of nothing. Nothing, believe it or not, the vacuum of outer space is a storehouse of energy that's pushing the galaxies apart, 
That's why the universe is expanding out of control. So I, as a physicist, want to calculate the cosmological constant, the energy of nothing, this anti-gravity that's pushing the galaxies apart. One of the most embarrassing aspects of physics today is that when you calculate that number, you are off by 10 to the 120. That's one with 120 zeros after it. That's how big there's a mismatch between the theory and the experiment. Yeah, that's been called the greatest blood mistake in the history of, of any kind of reasoning or, or science. So it, so it certainly shows that there's something missing in our understanding. Now, some have speculated that as this universe expands, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe the cosmological constant can reverse itself. Maybe through extra dimensions or something, there'll be something, you know, something with extra dimensions colliding at some point that'll sort of reset the stage when we didn't even know it. So, you know, you're familiar with those different kinds of theories. How realistic should we take any of them? Or is the universal expansion into ultimate ice and then disintegration of ice to us really nothing? Is that the most likely scenario? Or some of these others have some possibilities? Well, we have None to... of which would be very good, by the way, because all of them would, would, re that would restart it over again would just blow, up, blow us up into some new big bang. So that, that, that w it wouldn't necessarily be particularly nice. Right. It, to die in fire or ice, <laughs> neither possibility is very pleasant. We have looked for the engine driving this expansion, and some people have looked for alternative cosmologies. There is a theory called the Big Splat Theory, where our universe is a membrane, this gigantic beach ball, which collides with another beach ball. And the collision could be periodic, and each collision creates a big bang of sorts. Every trillion years or so. Right, so in that universe, perhaps we can start all over again, but it does mean there's gonna be a fiery big crunch where everything we see around us will be in flames. So, you know, we have a choice, either be uh, burned alive in fire or frozen in ice, but either one seems to be a logical conclusion of the equations. It seems to be unavoidable. Well, it's, uh, it's probably not our generation, uh, but uh, at some point in the future, that's what humanity will, will face. That's right. I work in something called string theory, which supposedly gives you a theory of all these forces. But at the centerpiece is the cosmological constant. And so mm -hmm. far, string theory is not developed enough to answer that question. Why do we live in a universe where our universe is expanding in a very mild way, but is accelerating. Certainly this is the core of modern physics and modern uh, cosmology, is to focus on that cosmological constant. Uh, philosophically, it is, is central uh, to understanding what, what our far, far future will be. But even in physics itself, it has to be explained. I think there's a shelf full of Nobel Prizes waiting for the physicists who can tease apart the cosmological constant, which drives dark matter and dark energy, because ultimately we are talking about a theory of everything. And I think this is going to open up a whole new realm. This is one of the central problems in all of physics. If you have a theory of everything, can your theory explain why nothingness is destroying the universe? <laughs>